welcome back to my channel. I am Karil Pahunar Paltinka, a BS and Social Studies student. Welcome to Edso Uchri, facilitating learner-centered teaching. And today's discussion, we're going to discuss about the transfer of learning module 15. And by the way, I am with Mr. Gerald Pacquiao in this discussion. And the objectives of this module is first, explain how transfer of learning occurs. Second, identify the factors that affect transfer of learning. And third, apply principles of transfer in facilitating transfer of learning. And also, we're going to discuss about the transfer of learning, types of transfer, conditions, and principles of transfer. What is transfer of learning? The main purpose of any learning or education is that a person who acquires some knowledge or skill in a formal or structured situation like a classroom or a training situation will be able to transfer such knowledge and skills to real life situation and adapt himself more effectively. Today, transfer of learning is usually described as the process and the effective extent to which past experiences also referred to as the transfer source affect learning and performance in a new situation, the transfer target. How does transfer of learning occur? Transfer of learning occurs when people apply information, strategies, and skills they have learned to a new situation or context. Transfer is not a discrete activity, but it is rather an integral part of the learning process. Let's tackle the examples of transfer of learning. First example, a student learns to solve polynomial equations in class, and they use as the knowledge to solve similar problems for homework. Second, an instructor describes several psychiatric disorders in class. Next class period, students read several scenarios and use that knowledge to identify and explain the disorder in each scenario. So there is a transfer of learning in that example. Let's discuss about the factors that can affect transfer of learning includes the following. There are seven important factors that may affect the learning process. First is intellectual factor, learning factors, physical factors, mental factors, emotional and social factors, teacher's personality, environmental factor. First is intellectual factor. The term refers to the individual mental level. Success in school is generally closely related to level of the intellect. Pupils with low intelligence often encounter serious difficulty in mastering skill works. Sometimes pupils do not learn because of the special intellectual disabilities. Second is learning factors. Factors owning to lack of mastery of what has been taught, faulty methods of work, or study and narrowness of experimental background may affect the learning process of any pupil. If the school proceeds too rapidly and goes not constantly check up on the extent to which the pupil is mastering what is being taught, the pupil accumulates a number of deficiencies that interfere with successful progress. And third is the physical factors. Under this group are included such factors as health, physical development, nutrition, visual and physical defects, and granular abnormal abnormality. Fourth is mental factors. Attitude falls under mental factors attitude are made up of organic and kinesthetic elements. They are not to be confused with emotion that are characterized by eternal visceral disturbance. Attitudes are more or less or defined sort. They play a large part in the mental organization and general behavior of the individual. Five is emotional and social factors personal factors such as instinct and emotions and social factors such as cooperation and revivably 
are directly related to a complex of psychology of motivation. It is recognized the fact that the various response of the individual to various kinds of stimuli are determined by a wide variety of tendencies, that is the emotional and social factors, that which, which is our personal factors about our personal emotions or our socializing with others. Six is teacher's personality. The teacher's personality really affects our learning process of transfer of learning. The teacher as an individual personality is an important element in the learning environment or in the failures and success of the learner. The way in which his personality interacts with the personalities of the pupils being taught helps to determine the kind of behavior which emerges from the learning situation. So it really, it has a big impact of the personality of the teacher to every student or the pupils. Seven is environmental factor. Physical condition needed for learning is under environmental factor. One of the factors that affect the efficiency of learning is the condition in which learning takes place. This includes the classroom, textbook, equipment, school supplies, and other instructional materials. So the environmental factors really affect the learning process of the student. And now, let's discuss about the factors that affect our transport of learning and influence that affect the learning of the students to make effective. To make sure trainees are successful in their learning journeys and also apply what they learn in real-life work situation, it is essential to address these seven key factors. First is the stakeholders. Second, context. Third, social environment. Fourth, motivation. Fifth, integration, six intensity, and seven technology. The first one is stakeholders. Commitment, alignment, and compliance of all stakeholders are essential in any training program. This is why effective communication with all parties involved should be a key objective of the HR or department in charge of the training strategy when people feel that they are included in the decision-making process, that they are part of the solution, they tend to learn better. Second is context. Context is also a crucial factor when we design training programs for companies. Moreover, learning objectives should be in line with a specific business situation in general, non-specific training program about selling techniques might be helpful for sales managers that have to adapt the rule to the new COVID-19 context. Keep in mind that people learn more if they feel that they could benefit immediately from the acquired knowledge. Third is social environment. Education, be it formal, informal, or non-formal, is a social experience. People learn better when they feel that the social environment is supportive. Meaningful social relationship with colleagues and a collaborative environment in which all people feel that they are included and have a voice are key factors for the transfer of learning. Next is motivation. Learners' motivation leads to transfer. It goes without saying that knowledge will stick for a longer time if people are motivated. The hardest thing is to find those motivation triggers for individuals and teams as they might vary across organizations. Keep in mind that the motivation level and the social environment go hand in hand so try to co create a collaborative environment across your team. Fifth is integration. Training programs should prove their applicability at work. Time is of the essence is in companies, especially these days when people have to adapt to a lot of changes, some with a clear and disruptive effect. So make sure that the time people spend in training is actually the time they need to learn something useful at their job, something that they can use the next day. Obviously, this means more pressure on the training providers to offer tailored cut programs 
perfectly adapted to the specific needs of each customer. Next is intensity. If training programs are designed as a single event, the transfer of learning will not be very high. Frequent and diverse stimulation lead to a more effective transfer. This is this where EdTech solutions can in handy as they offer many possibilities for blended learning online and offline synchronous and asynchronous the use of multiple devices or etc so feel free to innovation and offer a wide of variety of learning opportunities and lastly is the technology technology is more than a simple tool in training it should be considered an integral part of any training strategy. Being tech savvy and essential for any professional, it's like being literate. So make sure that you can bridge any technological gap that may exist among employees and include technology in training opportunities. To paraphrase the famous French intellectual and politician Andres Maraus, the 21st century will be technological or it will not be. Make sure that technology is not an issue and use it both the transfer of knowledge. And now let's discuss about apply principles of transfer in facilitating transfer of learning. There are 10 ways, 10, 10 ways to improve transfer of learning. With this in mind, here are some tips for taking what you learn in educational settings and applying it in the workplace and other areas of life. This is focus on the relevance of what you are learning. Research shows that when learning is relevant, students are able to connect what they're learning to what they already know and build new neural connections and long-term memory storage. So if you want your learning to be engaging and to be able to remember it in other contexts, it's important to establish relevance early on. Think about how you might apply what you, you are learning today in your future job or everyday life and then try to tie it to some of your short or long-term goals. Second is take time to reflect and self-explain. Before you can transfer knowledge to new contexts, you need to understand the concept inside and out, which is why it is important to take time for reflection and self-explanation. Research shows that self-explanation can help you to identify any incorrect assumption lead to a deeper understanding of the material and ultimately promote knowledge transfer. Third is use a variety of learning media. Another way to facilitate the transfer of learning to new contexts is to use as many different learning media as possible, from text and imaginary to video and audio. Research shows that using pictures, narrations, and text can help prevent your cognitive resources from becoming overloaded and improve learning transfer. One study found that learners who use a relevant visual were able to retain more information and scored higher or transfer tests than those who use only text. They also perceived the content as easier to learn when visuals were used. So, use a variety of learning media. So, fourth is change things up as often as possible. It's easy to get stuck in a route with your learning by studying around the same time, in the same location, and using the same study strategies in every day. But when you get used constantly studying in the same way, it can be difficult to transfer the knowledge you acquire to new environments and situations. So change things up as often as possible. Fifth, is identify any gaps in your knowledge without the complete understanding of the concept of information you're learning transferring it to new contexts will be more difficult with this in mind it is important to identify any gaps in your knowledge and then work on strengthening your weaker area 
Six is establish clear learning goals. Establishing clear learning goals will give you a better understanding of what you are trying to get out of your learning and how you might later transfer that knowledge and apply it in your work or personal life. If you know that the expected learning outcomes are, you will also be able to focus on the right material. So establish clear learning goals. So you must establish your learning goals in life so that you can apply that knowledge in your personal life or another important in your life. Seven is practice generalizing. Generalizing is the ability to transfer the knowledge or skills you gain in one setting to a new one. It is all about seeing the bigger picture and looking for more widely applicable rules, ideals, or principles. For example, a child that learns to stack wooden blocks could generalize that skill and later use it to build more elaborately creation using Lego bricks. So, practice generalizing. You can develop your own skills by that. So when studying a new topic or concept, think about your professions or experience and look for patterns and relationship. You can then determine whether this generalization can be supported by other evidence you know of. Eight is make your learning social. If much of your learning happens when you are alone, it can help to have a chance to discuss it with others. This gives you the opportunity to explain what you are learning in your own words and apply your knowledge to new situation. Research also shows that collaborative learning promotes engagement and benefits long-term retention. Make your learning social. That is the definition of make your learning social. Nine is use analogies and metaphors. Analogies and metaphors are great for drawing in your prior knowledge or experience and making associations between seeming unrelated ideas. So when learning something new and trying to connect it to something you already know, it can help to think of appropriately analogies or metaphors. And lastly, Number 10 is find daily opportunities to apply what you've learned. So you must find daily opportunities to apply what you've learned. Applying what you've learned at school to real-world problems takes a lot of practice. So it's important to look for opportunities to apply what you're learning in your everyday lives. That's all for today's discussion. Thank you for your listening and hope you learn about it. And this will end of my report about the transfer of learning. So Mr. Jerome Prakasha will continue about the objectives of this module which is transfer of learning hope you learn and enjoy watching thank you and god bless at you all thank you bye bye